Hello, uh, my name is Simon Bourne of the Institute of International Shipping and Trade Law. Today's talk will consider the effect of the current public health emergency on late island marriage and the voyage charters. The WHO declared a pandemic on the 11th of March 2020 and the UK is coming up for seven weeks under a form of lockdown. Nearly every country in the world has been affected by the scourge of COVID-19, so-called because it is the coronavirus which emerged in December 2019. The world seems on pause, but international carriage of goods by sea carries on a pace, albeit with some delays. It is these delays which I shall consider in discussing Leitheim and demurrage under COVID-19. A good guide to the current situation in ports throughout the world is provided by the regular assessments provided by the North of England P&I Club. A link is given as to the position as of the 1st of May 2020, and it's up there on the screen. In many countries, ships are having to wait for the crew to be tested before being admitted into port. Djibouti provides one example. Once vessels arrive in Djibouti waters, they remain at anchorage until all crews on board are tested for COVID-19 by local health officers and free critique granted by the same quarantine officers, after which the vessel is allowed to berth subject to the availability of berths. Once the vessels berth alongside the ports, piers and berths, shore people such as stevedores, surveyors and agents are only allowed to board the vessels when they are in facial masks, medical gloves and goggles. Stevedores are available but are not always adequate, as was the case before the outbreak of the pandemic, so no change there. This type of regime is going to impact on when lay time starts. A ship will not be ready in a position to give notice of readiness until the crew have had the necessary testing for COVID. This leads to a consideration of the requirement of free critique. In 2010, in the Eagle of Valencia, this was defined as follows. Official permission from the port health authorities that the ship is without infectious disease or plague and the crew is allowed to make physical contact with the shore. Otherwise, the ship may be required to wait at quarantine Anchorage for clearance. That's from the Eagle Valencia. If the obtaining of free critique is a mere formality, a valid NOR can be given before free critique is obtained. In 1972, in Bedelian Export, Lord Denning said, Obiter, I can understand that if a ship is known to be infected by a disease, such as to prevent her getting her critique, she would not be ready to load or discharge. But if she is apparently a clean bill of health, such that there is no reason to fear delay, then even though she has not been given her critique, she is entitled to give notice of readiness and lay time will begin to run. Well, Clearly, obtaining free critique is not a mere formality in the new normal of COVID-19. The resultant delays will fall to the account of owners. It is unlikely that the position is changed by the inclusion of a clause stating whether in free critique or not. The tribunal in a London arbitration in 2000 considered the clause in circumstances where after NOR was tended, Tenderly, it became clear that four crew members did not have valid vaccination certificates. This delayed the grant of free critique for 13 days. The tribunal held that the clause assumed that the vessel obtaining free critique was a mere formality. As it was not, the NOR given was invalid. And of course, the ship may be subject to quarantine. The Scottish decision of White versus Winchester in 1886 shows that where a quarantine restriction is placed on the vessel, 
she cannot be considered ready to load or discharge. The result of the restriction is that the work is prevented and laytime cannot begin to run. A similar decision was given six years later in the Austrian Friars. This involved the operation of a cancellation clause. The port authority forbade the loading until the doctor had visited the vessel and pronounced her free from infection. That occurred after the cancelling date in the charter, and the charterers had therefore legitimately brought the contract to an end. Once late time starts, it will continue running unless interrupted by an event falling within the late time exceptions or a delay caused by the fault of the ship owner. Once late time expires and the vessel goes on demurrage, demurrage will continue until the completion of loading or discharge as the case may be. It will not be interrupted by the late time exceptions unless they specifically extend to demurrage, but will be interrupted by delays caused by the fault of the ship owner or the ship owner using the vessel for his own purposes. Now, the charter party may well have some general exceptions, but these will not suspend the running of late time. That's decided in the case of the Just Sturber. The provisions of the Hague Rules may be incorporated under a clause paramount, but these are also irrelevant to the running of late time and demurrage. And the case on that is Leeds Shipping versus Duncan Fox and Co. back in 1932. Now, restrictions on loading or discharge in port by, by the Port Authority, which affect the running of lay time and demurrage. What's the effect of that? Well, in the Maria G, illegality was considered. The harbour of master at Calcutta was fearing the effect of a bore tide that was expected, ordered the ship to shift from an alongside berth out to the buoys. Now, on the assumption that the law made it an offence for the charterers to attempt to load during the period that the vessel was away from the berth, Laytime still carried on running. Schofield in Laytime and Demurrage summarises the position as follows. It therefore seems that to stop Laytime on the basis of illegality, any prohibition must be of a permanent or at least indefinite nature. And indeed, there is a a case called Petrinovich, where um, the vessel shifted from a, um, her berth in Bordeaux because of the um, approach of the German army in 1940. Definitely wasn't going to go back there, and we then move on to questions of frustration. So, I'm now going to have a brief word about a couple of clauses which have been developed which may um, be relevant to the current public health emergency. The first is BIMCO's 2015 publications in response to Ebola. They had a time charter one and a voyage charter one. The clause requires that there is a disease which is defined in the clause as a highly infectious or contagious disease that is seriously harmful to humans. Now, no matter what you might have thought back in say February or March, it's pretty clear that COVID falls within this definition. The clause provides that its terms will supersede any other terms of the charter, including a force majeure provision. A limitation on the clause is that it expressly limits its application to situations which arise after the date of the charter point. The voyage charter clause provides that if the owner or well, the master reasonably assesses there to be an unacceptable risk of exposure, they may refuse to follow the charter's original orders and request alternative orders. Alternatively, if the vessel comes to be in an affected area, they can depart to a safe place. Any extra costs incurred in respect of quarantine, fumigations, cleaning, and the like will be for charterers' account. That is, after all, a BIMCO clause. Time loss will count as lay time or demurrage. If fresh orders are required, but are not given by the charterers, 
owners will have the right to discharge the cargo at a safe port of their choice. With the latter, any extra expenses are recoverable from the charterer, and full freight will still be payable, and indeed there may be additional freight to be paid if the vessel has to sail an extra distance of over 100 miles to the alternative port. <laughs>